for back to the E1 part, I didn't realize, you know, we have an H3O plus and an I minus. Do they not come together? Um, they could, but that would not give you an organic product. So okay. that wouldn't be too interesting. And actually, if they did come together, they would produce this, right? Mm -hmm. But this is hydroiodic acid, which is a strong acid, which tends to be completely deprotonated in so solution. if they came together, wouldn't the I attach to the O? Uh, I guess there wouldn't really be room for that. This already has a full octet. Oh, okay, so never mind. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this o oxygen already has more, uh, has, uh, has a full octet, so it can't so receive any new electrons. For that, we just leave them separate. Yeah, we can just leave uh, the H3O plus and uh, the iodide as uh, separate in this case. That's right. Okay. What's most important is to get the right organic product, uh, but, but that's fine there too. All right, so this would be our SN1 product uh, over here. So again, we would get uh, both the E1 product. Here was our organic E1 product. And here's our organic SN1 product um, from this. We'd get a mixture of both of those in this case. All right. Um, now, again, notice that um, we didn't really have to redraw this step. If you'd wanted to, you could have just used this guy and had the nucleophile attack. So notice that at this point, once you have this carbocation, the water can either steal a proton from the beta carbon, or the water can attack the alpha carbon. That's the whole difference between E1 and SN1. And there's an equal chance of both, that's why you get both products. Right, and it's not necessarily actually an equal chance. I think you normally do get more SN1 than E1. I, I don't think that would be something you'd be tested on. Um, so we're not saying that there's an exactly equal amount of these. We're just saying we're gonna get considerable amounts of both. We'll, we'll, both of these will be important products uh, that we're going to get. Let's take a look at the front of the handouts. Page one of the handouts. If you look at the top of page one, I tried to diagram the mechanisms for all of the mechanisms here. Uh, in fact, I should have reminded you that we've already seen E2. So look at E2 here on the top of the handout. Notice how that shows the three different arrows that are participating. I should have labeled the alpha and uh, beta carbons there. I guess I hadn't thought about that yet. So I, you should notice um, there, though, that uh, you might want to label the alpha and the beta carbons. So that shows the basic reaction for a E2 reaction. Yeah, in the handout, I put the alpha carbon on the left, even though when we did it together, I have the alpha carbon on the right. All right, now let's look at the SN1E1 on the right-hand side at the top of the handout. Notice that I put SN1 and E1 together in the same cell. Why? Because the first step is the same for both of them. Notice that they both have the same first step. What happens is that the leaving group leaves and forms the carbocation, and then uh, I guess this could be clearer, but you can see now that two things can happen. Either, the nucle either a, a nucleophile can attack the alpha carbon, or the base can steal a proton from the beta carbon. Again, I should have really labeled the alpha carbon and the beta carbon, but hopefully you can see from that diagram, once you form the carbocation, either a nucleophile can uh, attack the alpha carbon, that would be SN1, or the base can steal a proton from the beta carbon, that would be E1. So they do have the same slow rate determining step over here. As it says at the bottom, SN1 and E1 have identical rate determining steps, so they generally occur simultaneously and have the same properties. Uh, I also showed there, I actually drew three different things that could happen. Because I showed that since we, notice how I drew the carbocation as trigonal planar. It, it actually shows right. it as trigonal planar. So I showed the nucleophile could attack from one direction or the other direction, giving us two different SN1 products, or the base could steal the proton from the beta carbon. So I tried to pack maybe too much information to that one picture, but that's a good thing to, to study again and meditate on. Is that on. the same in this one? Like it could either take this hydrogen uh, no, because it's not trigonal planar, so it's only going to Oh, this one's not trigonal planar? Well, yeah, first of all, um, when I said that the nucleophile could attack from either direction, remember that was referring to the nucleophile, not the base. Right. No, um, this is the SN1 part that I'm talking about. Yeah, so in the SN1 part, yeah, so that didn't, re uh, the reason that we didn't talk about that here is, is this a stereo center? Oh, no. no. No, so we didn't have to worry about the two different directions that the nucleophile could attack from here. So if this was a stereocenter, there would even be more products. There would be one E1 product and there would be two different SN1 products. So you can definitely get a whole mess of products for SN1 and E1. Uh, that's not too uncommon on exams to see a problem with a whole bunch of different SN1 and E products. Um, well, uh, because usually you have both SN1 and E1 together and if you're attacking a stereocenter, you have two SN1 products, retention of configuration and inversion of configuration. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website. There's a link to the website in the info box. Uh, here's the address of my website, uh, www.freelance.com.
dash teacher dot com slash videos dot htm. That address is www dot freelance dash teacher dot com slash videos dot htm. Uh, or you can just use the link in the info box. Uh, I'll also mention that I offer tutoring uh, via Skype. Um, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service also at this website. And again, there's a link to that site in the info box. Thank you.